I'm going to try out some performative slam poetry, a medium I have absolutely zero experience with. We'll see how it goes. You may be wondering, who is this person? Because you don't want to assign them a gender just yet, because you recognize that the false dichotomy of the gender binary system fails to accurately describe the lived experiences of many people whose identity does not fit cleanly into the box of male or female. And to answer your question, non-binary will do. I get lost in the details often myself. Singular they pronouns, please. Thank you for asking. But let me get back to what I was saying. I walk through the dark and Byzantine cords of the internet, hearing folks mutter and fret about the new speak I inflict on them, because they're all he's and she's, and why can't that be good enough for me? Why can't they call me whatever they like? I'm infringing on their rights. And I could waste liters of breath on dissecting what's wrong with that, but I'm not going to, because that would lend the argument a sense of legitimacy it does not deserve. Instead, I will now put on my literary criticism hat. I recognize my literary criticism hat is far too large for my comically tiny head, but this hat belonged to my grandfather, who was once an editor for the Columbus Dispatch, so of all of the hats I own to be my literary criticism hat, this one seems the most fitting. The power of language has frequently been analyzed through the lens of science fiction, not always subtly and not always successfully. For all the shifkrathor of the left hand of darkness, it obeyed some 19th century grammarian's Latin fetish dictate and used he when anything but he would have had much more power in the minds of the readers. In Babel 17, poetry was a weapon. In native tongue, language was a shield. And in George Orwell's 1984, it was a boot of oppression, a means of control. Newspeak took away the ability of the oppressed class to describe their plight, and depending on how much mileage you're willing to give the Sapir Whorf hypothesis, it took away their ability to even be cognizant of their oppression. Neologisms aren't Newspeak. Yes, Neo means new, but that's where the similarities end. Neologisms give the users of language power to think about and describe things that may have previously defied description. Things like selfies, emoticons, grok, or big brother. In spite of the impression possibly left by elementary school English teachers, there is no authority governing the English language. It's defined by its usage, and in the interconnected world in which we live in, that usage can change quickly and quixotically. I dare say most English users will have little want or need to tell their bay they're on fleek, but allowing the predominantly non-white youth who do access to that language costs us nothing. And need I point out that forbidding us from trying on a dressing room of descriptors like genderqueer, gray gender, genderfuck, genderfluid, or demiman sounds an awful lot like the more Orwellian position to take? Yet somehow, the new speak is me and we are big brother, and the poor and downtrodden are left to suffer through an existence in which language is subject to updates. And in patch infinity plus one, somebody gets access to a word that describes their experience of gender. If we do indeed possess the power of autocratic control of language, may I suggest a complete ban on any and all allusions to 1984.